Welcome back to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. Thank you so much, people. We are over 3,600 subscribers. I thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to do this real quick. The game just ended. I'm going live tonight again with Ben Daniel, the beast, Ben Daniel, calling a spade a spade. We're going live at 8 o'clock. But I'm jumping on here real fast to talk about this game. And I'm sure we're going to go way deeper in our live session at 8 o'clock, which we will be doing for an hour. But let me tell you something today. Whoa, boy, what a comeback by the Indiana Fever. That was big time. I will tell you this. If I I don't typically like the WNBA as a product, but I could watch these two teams play over and over and over and over again. They are fun. Indiana versus Dallas. These are carbon copy squads. They play the same style. They are up and down, up and down. Neither of them plays much defense, but they are going. Indiana starts the quarter down four, outscores Dallas 30 to 19. The game was 89-89. Kelsey Mitchell hits a driving layup to make it 91-89 off of an Aaliyah Boston rub on an inbound play. All right. Lexi Hull has to commit some foul, ends up being 91-91. But the play, the play that really ended this game, Dantes, Demiris Dantes has a jump ball um, with J.C. Sheldon. And this is one where it should be automatic that a six foot four, six five woman wins a tip. It's a 5'10 woman. But I have noticed when it comes down to women's basketball, they don't tip the ball properly. The, based on how the the the, the lineup the, the women are lined up. So in this case, Dantes should should have tipped the ball backward to the gap between Aaliyah Boss and Caitlin Clark. That was where the gap was. It wasn't set very well though. They need to be wider than that. But she doesn't tip it there. And I'm saying to myself, I have a feeling she's gonna tip it to the wrong the wrong direction. And she did. She tipped it to the direction of Kelsey Mitchell who's in front of her, Kelsey Mitchell cuts off the Dallas player, catches the ball, pushes it up the court. So everything that you should not do was done. You didn't tip it to the, the, the proper person. You tip it forward. Kelsey grabs it, dribbles it up the court, and Sabali backs off of her. She dropped covers on her. Kelsey says, really? Foop! Left-handed three. It's 95-91 with 153 left. And that was pretty much the ball game right there. I mean, she Kelsey Mitchell defended the shit out of Arike Agumbawale in the second quarter, especially second half, especially in the fourth quarter. Arike lost all rhythm that she had because the first half she was on fire, 24 points, 9 of 14. She finishes the game with 34 on 12 of 25. So you're looking at a tail of two halves. She's three for... 9 of 14, so she's 3 for 11 in the second half. Arika goes 9 of 16 from 3. You know, she misses a shot on a drive. That, she missed a few shots down the stretch. I have my notes right here. But, yeah, that Mitchell, Kelsey Mitchell's defense in the, in, in the fourth quarter, especially, was incredible on Arika Gumbawale. Caitlin Clark, double-double machine, 28 points, 12 assists. We saw some Iowa tonight. We saw Iowa in that fourth quarter. Now, I don't want to see the Iowa all the way because this is still not college basketball. But she knocks down a three. She knocks down another three. It's 84-82 Indiana. And then she comes back down the floor and takes a heat check three with about five minutes and change to go in the game. I really didn't like that shot because I think at that point they're going to come up. You go right by them. Not to mention, it's a two-point game. Heat checks in a two-point game are not typically the best idea. You typically heat check when you're up like seven, eight, nine, ten points, and it's like a dagger type of situation. But got away with it, and uh, wow, what a win for the Indiana Fever. Caitlin Clark, again, 28 points, 12 assists. She did have seven turnovers. Indiana was loose with the ball. They finished with 20 turnovers as a team. Everybody was turning the ball over, but um, there were a couple that Caitlin got charged for that weren't really on her drop passes by teammates. Melissa Smith goes for 14 and eight. 
um, doesn't play at all in the fourth quarter. If there were some interesting substitutions by Christie Sides that didn't really, really, I didn't like at all. End of the, T- Temi Fag Benley doesn't play pretty much any of the fourth quarter for the most part. She comes in the game late in the third. I get it. Melissa Smith is scoring some points, but defensively she's a turnstile and she could not do anything to defend um, Howard or, or Savali. Uh, t- Lexi Hall was primarily on Savali, who, who had a great game, 25 points. Remember, Savali didn't play the last game that Dallas played versus uh, Indiana, um, but she she balled out too, hitting four threes as well. There was a period where Dallas was just cranking threes. Dallas finishes with 13 threes. Uh, Indiana finishes with 11, 11 for 22. Indiana, Indiana shot 52.9% from the field. 37 of 70. The the difference really in the game that kept the game so close was the turnovers. Indiana was treating the ball like a hot potato for most of this game. It was there were just a lot of turnovers, a lot of sloppy ball handling plays, get, getting pockets picked. Um, just not not good ball handling overall by the team as a whole. But that's a huge huge win for them. Dantes comes off the bench with seven, hits a big three. Um, in that game, she's plus 11 off the bench. We need to see Aaliyah, Aaliyah Boston come back. She's only had, she only had seven points, eight rebounds. Again, five fouls. I don't know what's going on with Aaliyah Boston. She's picking and popping too much, not enough picking and rolling. Because when she pick it, when she finally rolled to the rim, gets a layup out of it. Um, she had a play late in the game where she's backing down, backing, down, and then she double dribbles. Again, that's a position where you're kicking back out. Let's let's reset this thing or move it back around, move the ball. But Arike Gumbuale come came out for like 30 seconds in that game because of uh, she's complaining about a fa- about about a flagrant foul. That play, I didn't even see. There was the foul where she where where uh, who was it? Was it Caitlin or was it Kelsey? Whoever it was, um, hits the three. It was Kelsey. Kelsey lands on. Agumbawale's foot, which is a flagrant foul by rule, but I just thought it would be one free throw and the ball. Instead, it's two free throws and the ball. That play at that time, if you go back and look at it, Dallas was winning by eight. They had an eight-point lead. The three, coupled with the two free throws, brought it down to three. And then they got possession again. That could have been an eight-point possession. Uh, Indiana turned the ball over, so that didn't happen. But can you imagine an eight-point possession? That would have been crazy. I've I've never seen an eight-point possession in my life in a basketball game. But crazier crazier things happen in women's basketball. I mean, you still see these this this propensity to miss bunny layups, which is just mind-blowing at times. And you're hitting 30 – I mean, you're hitting 25-footers, but you're missing the shot that's three feet from the rim with nobody on you. It's crazy to watch. But we need to see Aaliyah Boston. I think Aaliyah Boston's confidence is a bit down right now. She's not even shooting the ball. She took six shots today. She needs to shoot the ball more. But that's also the thing that, has, that goes to, that goes along with the fact she's not actually picking and rolling to the rim. She's trying to become a, a facilitator, like almost like a hockey assist player. Well, not the hockey assist. She's getting the assist while the, the pass to her from Caitlin becomes a hockey assist because she's not rolling and because she's midway, she doesn't seem to have a lot of confidence in her shot, so she's kicking out to the corner or to the wing to a wide-open player. In theory, it's a good play, but we need you active, Aaliyah. We need you to make shots. We need you We need you to dominate around the rim. You're the best post player this team's got, right? Now, and, and McCowan can't guard you. You're going to be able to blow by McCowan every time. She's too slow. That said, huge, huge win by the Indiana Fever. I didn't like that sub pattern because at one point late in the third, Christy side subs out, Don, subs in Dantas and uh, Fag Benley for uh, Smith and Boston. I'd rather see Boston out there with Fag Benley. Um, realistically, I think Smith needs to be just instant offense off of the bench. I think I think Fag Benley should start, but she barely played in the fourth quarter. It, it, I mean. With, she, did, she barely played. Did she play at all? I don't even know if she played a, a minute of the fourth quarter. And I'm not saying it didn't work, but, it, you know, let me see here. I don't think she played a minute of the fourth quarter. She came in. She hit that two-point shot at the buzzer off of the Caitlin Clark miss, which was a big, big bucket. Um, Clark missed from a mile away, hit it off the backboard. I wanted to call it an assist off the board. 
to the fact Bentley, but that was a great putback, huge play right there, turned a six point game into a four point game. But yeah, I don't think she played the rest of the game because I rem- I think uh, I'm looking at the play by play. I don't see Fag Bentley's name in here the entire fourth quarter. Yeah, she she was pulled. Okay, no, Fag Bentley played 40, 40 seconds. She played 39 seconds of the fourth quarter. I, I think she should play more than that. They put Katie Lou Samuelson in the game. Why? Why? Katie Lou Samuelson played six played played eight minutes. She's playing in the fourth quarter. You bitch this woman. Why is she in the game in the fourth quarter? It's mind-blowing that she's in the game in the fourth quarter. Don't understand it at all. Don't understand it at all. Crazy to see that. But, hey, look, ended it, Lexi Hall didn't do much today in terms of offensively. Um, she finishes with, I think, what, she had four? Six. She had six. Um, she's doing those hustle plays. But I, I, I thought defensively today Indiana was pretty awful. And, and, you know, the shots that Arika Gumbawale was getting, she was getting a lot of open looks. They're playing under the screens. They're not crashing. Arika Gumbawale cannot be getting open shots. You have to treat her the way people treat Caitlin Clark. You have to you have to blitz her. Someone else has to score. Someone else has to score. Because when she gets cooking, you get the first half, where she's got 24 of their 46 points. She was on fire. There was nothing you could do about it. But there was nothing you could do about it because she got cooking and they still weren't crash, crashing her. I mean, she had that one three, that one bank three, which was obviously luck. But overall, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta defend her differently. You can't let her get going. Once she gets going, it's a different ball game. Um, overall, JC Sheldon for Dallas. I love how she plays. She is a tough ass woman. She dives to the ground after everything. And that's one thing I still don't see people, players, besides Lexi Hull, usually is the only one. I don't see players for the Indiana if you were diving to the ground for loose balls. That is the thing that they're probably missing is that type of dog who doesn't care about points, is going to do everything he, she can to get the ball. And Sheldon did a great job of that tonight. She she she's a dog. She's an absolute dog. And yeah, I mean, I, heck of a game. Heck of a game. I, it was an absolute. It was this was the type of game where you're watching this and you're sitting here saying, "You only wish that every WNBA game looked like this," but they don't. <laughs> but they don't. Daryl Swoops gets pulled off of the broadcast. We will talk about more more of that tonight with with Ben Daniel. But did you hear Nancy Lieberman tonight today? Oh boy. Did you hear Nancy Lieberman today? Oh boy, 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 boy. She loves her some Caitlin Clark. She loves her some Caitlin Clark. Bro, she said that Caitlin Clark was the rookie of the year over and over and over and over again. She did not stop saying it. She even said, if you have a problem with me, you have my number. You can give me a call. You can DM me or whatever the heck it is. But, whoo, boy, that was uh, that was fun to listen to because you, ha- you finally have a reporter. Uh, I mean, Nancy Lieberman has a better reputation in basketball probably than Cheryl Swoops historically. But Nancy Lieberman was telling you all night who the rookie of the year was. Can you imagine if Cheryl Soups had done the night's game with Caitlin Clark going for 28 and 12? Man, it, it would have been it would have been misery for her. She wouldn't have mentioned her name. That player in red, the you know, 2 2, the point guard. <laughs> I think it's telling that the WNBA or the Dallas Wings or a combination of both removed her from this game. They had to remove her. You couldn't have her on here. In fact, she shouldn't be a broadcaster. If she can't objectively broadcast games. She shouldn't be a broadcaster. She was on Twitter defending Diamond DeShields for the dog shit she was doing against Caitlin Clark with those you know, intentional fouls, body blocks. Like, stop it. At what point do you – Cheryl Swoops is such an embarrassment. It's not even worth talking about anymore. She's just an embarrassment, but I'm sure we'll talk about it more tonight. It was refreshing to not, to not listen to that clown uh, on the broadcast. 
because she would have destroyed her. She would have destroyed a great game if she was on the broadcast. At first, I wanted to see what she would do, but now I'm really glad she wasn't because I thought Nancy Lieberman made a point to tell everyone, Kayla Clark's rookie of the year, and she's a, a, a she's a she's obviously in the, in the MVP conversation as well. Um, what a performance! What a game! I enjoyed it thoroughly. We'll be talk more about it tonight at eight o'clock. Don't miss it. Jump on with us eight o'clock tonight. Come on now.